in missionary, I can really have a great orgasm. And that's particularly because there are tons of ways to adjust the position. Hello and welcome to the Pillow Talks podcast. We're your hosts, Vanessa and Xander Marin. I'm a sex therapist with over 20 years of experience. And I'm just a regular dude. We share the ups and downs in our relationship while giving you step-by-step techniques for improving yours. Make sure you subscribe for your weekly double date full of totally doable sex tips, practical relationship advice, hilarious and honest stories of what really goes on behind closed bedroom doors, and so much more. It's the sex education you wish you'd had. Thanks to Green Chef for sponsoring our podcast. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. Go to greenchef.com slash pillow60 and use code pillow60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. And thanks to Rocket Money for supporting our podcast. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones you don't want. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash pillow. Hey, Xander. Yeah? <laughs> Wait, what? What is that voice? It's my bedroom voice. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank God it's not. There we go. Oh, no. Let's go, baby. (laughs) Wasn't expecting this. Keep going. Come on, let's go. You got to go, baby. (laughs) It's your intro. (laughs) You just completely hijacked my intro. That was... That voice is so weird. <laughs> it's not sexy. <laughs> you don't What's want the, this. What is the name of this uh, alter ego here? Big Al. <laughs> Big Al. That's right, baby. <laughs> All right. All right. Wow. Come on. Pull it together, I- girl. <laughs> As I as I raise my voice two octaves, <laughs> pull it together, girl. <laughs> pull it together, girl. Oh my God, Big Al! I had no idea we were going to go in this direction. I mean, you were railing on me for for my lack of range like two episodes ago when I was trying to sing Mariah Carey. So I'm just showing you. You know, maybe I can't go high, but I can go low. <laughs> I can't wait to. Uh... Spend some quality time with Big Al. I know. Later. Hopefully, I don't blow anybody's <laughs> subwoofers out. That's not sexy. <laughs> That's sexy for like the two audio files in our audience, and one of them is you. <laughs> Nobody else cares. Anyways, what I was trying to do, which now is just like not going to work as an intro, but whatever. I was, <laughs> was going to say, you know. You're married to a sex therapist. You're the co-owner of a sex therapy company. Oh, yeah. I think people always assume we have this like very wildly kinky. Threesomes every night. Oh, yeah. Foursomes Uh, even. (laughs) With Big L. So I want to know, what's your favorite position? Because I imagine it must involve something about hanging upside down or slamming against the wall, being twisted in a pretzel. So tell us. God, you know, I'm, g- I'm going to have to think there's just so many positions that I do all the time. Every single time I have sex, how could I choose one? Well, I'll go with missionary. Yep, missionary. Yeah. Good old missionary. Xander Marin, Mr. Sex Therapy. Favorite sex position. So today's episode is all about missionary because missionary gets a pretty Brad, bad rap. Brad, bad rap? Brad, Brad rap. Brad rap. Don't you think, like, it's kind of looked down on. People think of, like, hmm, missionary, like, it's very vanilla. I mean, it just very, sounds like, very uncool, the word, I mean, like, <laughs> mis- <laughs> missionary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think people, you think of it as just being very dull, very chaste, you know, where people... Basic. Yeah, very it's basic. The, it's the first position uh-huh. that most people do, 
or most people hear about. And so you automatically think, well, it must not be a very good one if it's like the basic. It's like the starting point. Yeah, yeah. So I think a lot of people feel like there's something wrong with liking missionary or, you know, they shouldn't like it or it's, yeah, it just feels like too tame, too vanilla, too unexciting. Yeah, it's like being like, yeah, I love vanilla ice cream is my favorite kind of ice cream. Though, in reality, I think a lot of people really do love vanilla ice cream. There is a reason why vanilla ice cream is like the standard ice cream. Mm -hmm. It's because it's damn good. So we wanted to do this episode because we think, despite the reputation, that missionary is a phenomenal position, that there are so many incredible benefits to it, and there are lots of ways to spice it up. So yes, of course, you can have very boring, silent, in the dark, like, you know, quick little thrusting missionary that feels bad for everyone involved. But you can also make a lot of changes, some of them not even a big deal, like very easy changes to make missionary feel seductive and intimate and exciting and incredibly sexy. But before we assume the missionary position. Oh, look at that transition. We are going to read the review of the week. Fantastic, relatable, informative. I found this podcast today by typing a very oh. long <laughs> by typing a very long search on the podcast app that I didn't think would even work. Here it goes. It was how to be more open minded about kinky sex. Oh. Wow, that's awesome. I think that's great to just do a big, long, like, Google <laughs> Ask search in the podcast app and just see what comes up. Ask for what you want. Yeah, ask for what you want. I'm so glad that ours came up. All right, cry laughing face. My husband and I have been married 19 years, and he has always been the more adventurous one in the bedroom. I, on the other hand, struggle, and I don't know why. Sometimes I'm on board, and sometimes I'm such a prude. We live among a population of people who we know from personal experience are taught that certain sexual encounters and practices are frowned upon. That's never stopped us from being adventurous, but it does screw with my mind a little. That and the fact that we have two youngish kiddos, which always makes me feel really awkward. Anyways, I took a leap of faith and clicked on your podcast and found an episode about getting kinky and loved it. We're not beginners by any means, but there was a lot of helpful info that gives me a starting point to getting more comfortable and maybe even opening me up to taking charge so my sweet husband doesn't always have to play that part. Wink. <laughs> then I listened to the butt stuff episode, <laughs> the more recent one. That was also such a great episode. Really helped open my mind to why butt stuff is so enjoyable, especially for him, because that's been a struggle for me to get on board with. And I really look forward to reading through the guide with him. Yep, that's right. I ordered a book about full-on intercourse in my <laughs> anus. You guys rock. Thank you. Thank you for being so fun and relatable, yet so informative. Oh, my God. What a delightful review. Thank you so much for taking the time to leave this. And yeah. I love that this person literally found the podcast the day that they wrote the review. Like, yeah, I mean, like from big, long search, not expecting to find anything, mm -hmm. to finding a great episode, to finding another great episode, to becoming a customer of ours and leaving a review. You got an like, A++++. Plus, plus, plus. Hell yeah. I think we must <laughs> we must be doing something right. So if you are a listener who's been hanging out here for a while and you keep thinking, oh, I'm going to write him a review. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. And you haven't, then... Do it today. Do it today. Because this person literally wrote a review the day that they found the podcast, which is so cool. And we have our review of the week giveaway. So if this was you, email us at info at vmtherapy.com and tell us the username that you use to leave the review and you will get a masterclass of your choosing. We have four options for you to choose from and you will get it absolutely free. And if you leave us a review, you are entered into this weekly giveaway every single week going forward, just as our way of saying thank you for leaving a review. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit more about why people hate on missionaries so much. So we kind of already covered... Like, people think that missionary sex is very vanilla. And I think if you haven't heard that term used before, vanilla is used to be, like, you know, very basic, kind of straightforward sex. Yeah, it's definitely a judgmental term. Like, no, no when people say vanilla sex, no one is like, yeah, vanilla sex because vanilla is my favorite ice cream. And, like, it's, it's more of a, like, oh, vanilla is boring. Yeah, but just like you were saying with the ice cream example, like, vanilla is vanilla for a reason like a lot of people do love vanilla and i think it's the very same thing with sex P things get popular because they work for a lot of people yeah, they're, they're good. crowd pleasers right 
So I, you know, our perspective is always that any kind of sex that feels good for you, that feels good for your partner, that is good sex. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with having standby, you know, old reliable favorites that you really come back to time and time again. So of course, we talk a lot about like trying new things and stretching your comfort zone. We do think that there is so much to explore when it comes to sex. And like, why not explore? It can be really, really fun to try new things. It can feel very connecting, create this new experience between you and your partner. But I think sometimes people hear that that advice to try new things and they think that we mean like every single time you should be trying new things. And that's just not the case. Like do yeah, it every once try. in a while. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. emphasis is on try. It's not always do new things or do new things so you don't have to do the old things yeah. anymore. Yeah, it's like it's totally fine to have certain things that you know, like this works for me, it works for my partner, we enjoy it, like we like doing it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's you know, it's, it's akin to trying new things in the world as well, like trying new foods or traveling to new places, like just because you travel somewhere new, it doesn't mean that you need that you dislike your home, that you need to move somewhere else. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I've, I've always found that, you know, the more I travel, the more I appreciate my home and where I live. And that doesn't make me not want to travel anymore. Mm-hmm. But it also doesn't make me like want to move away from where I live. Like yeah. it's, it's enjoyable to travel and to experience new things. And afterwards, I come back to, you know, our familiar home and I love it even more. (laughs) I also think as people have become more aware of kinky sex, it's become more mainstream. Obviously, Fifty Shades of Grey was like a really big and not great example of bringing kink into the mainstream. But I think it's created this dynamic where some people think that kinky sex is inherently better than you know, vanilla in quotes sex. Or like like there's like beginner sex and then advanced yeah, sex. And I exactly. think, yeah, in, when you use that type of terminology, for the most part, you know, ideally you want to be, you know, advanced at whatever it is you're doing, whether it's mm-hmm. like a subject in school or like a, a skill, a sport yeah. or whatever. But yeah, with with sex, I feel like that's just not, it's not good terminology no, to, not to think all. of it that way. Yeah, you're not a beginner if you like missionary and you're not like some advanced special special person if you love kink like I have know I've said this a million times but like we always like to repeat this like whatever you like is great if you're into kink that's amazing and we're so excited and wonderful if you like vanilla sex that's amazing and exciting and we're happy for you like there is no hierarchy there are no gold stars to be awarded here so yes push yourself a little out of your comfort zone try some new things but don't be ashamed if you have certain things that you love to fall back on as long as they feel enjoyable to you that's all that matters yeah and so we're going to be talking a lot today about how to make missionary more enjoyable because i think a lot of people miss out on a lot of aspects of missionary that mm-hmm. are really truly excellent. Okay, so let's talk about what are the benefits of missionary. So I think for a lot of people, it can feel very like safe, comfortable, familiar. Instinctual even perhaps. And, <laughs> sure. Like there's, you know, and there's a, yeah, there is a comfort in that of like, it's just, I know this position. I know what to do. I know how to make it work for me. And like, you know, especially times where maybe you're tired that day or you're not feeling super adventurous. Like it's just this familiar standby for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, it is not very acrobatic and both parties are typically not needing to exert themselves too much mm-hmm. do in missionary. Except, you know, maybe we'll talk a little later we about <laughs> about ways that you can exert yourself or that you could. But the way, you know, the the OG missionary <laughs> yeah. is kind of like, yeah, no one no one's getting tired at tired out. No one is too uncomfortable. Yeah. And yeah, so that's an important thing too. Like for a lot of people, it's a very accessible position. Whereas other things that might be like acrobatic or requiring holding up weight, like just aren't going to be doable for a lot of bodies. So it can be an accessible position, not for all, but definitely for a lot of people. Yeah. So it can also be super intimate and romantic. And Mm -hmm. this is a kind of obvious one, like you're face to face in a lot of sex positions, especially, you know, if you get our our guide to next level intercourse, which includes a ton of sex positions, like you'll see there's a lot of options where you may not be facing each other. Like one person may be looking at the other person, but the, uh, you know, the other person is looking away or perhaps neither of you are looking at each other. And that definitely takes away some of the, the intimacy. 
because looking at each other, it can be really hot and sexy. Yeah, I mean, you're so close in missionary. Like you're really holding each other, embracing each other. It can feel much closer than pretty much any other position. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to think of any any other position where you are that close and, you know, mm-hmm. that really just vulnerable with each other. Yeah. I also think there's something about missionary that helps boost confidence for people. Like once you feel like you've kind of figured it out, because like you were saying, for most people, it is the first intercourse position that they start with. And so there can be this, this comfort of like, okay, I figured out how to make this work. I'm feeling good about it. Now I feel confidence to try something different too yeah because like you always have something to come back to like oh, okay i'm gonna try this mm-hmm. other one and maybe we do that for 30 seconds maybe we're really tired out after that okay let's go let's go back to the one you know the one that we know works okay so xander since this is your favorite sex position what is it that you like so much about it well you know i actually i think the the very first thing that i like most about it is that i'm pretty sure that I am capable of having the best orgasm oh. in missionary. Like Say I, more. I really, I really love cowgirl because I'm a uh-huh. secret pillow princess. <laughs> and I I do I love you on top. I love the view. I love the options for me touching you, you touching you, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I can't have quite of as intense of an orgasm in that position. Mm-hmm. And in missionary. I can really have a great orgasm. And that's particularly because there are tons of ways to adjust the position. Mm-hmm. Like there's, you know, kind of like the the standby missionary that I think most people uh, think of when they think of missionary. But there's so many ways to adjust your weight, lift yourself up a little bit, shift things very slightly that feel really different. So yeah, so it's like there's, there's just so many opportunities to give yourself a different experience throughout the whole experience so it's like things aren't getting stale Mm -hmm. and then when it comes time to orgasm uh you know you can get into whatever position you know really works best for you and Mm -hmm. have at it (laughs) great any other reasons why you love it well of course i also love being able to look at you now our height difference Mm, does does impact (laughs) that a little bit i have to really like i have to really get my chin like (laughs) to my chest and look down. We've got a full foot to, height to really see to her. With. But no, I mean, I, I am much closer to your face than mm-hmm. than than I am in any other position. Mm-hmm. And I like to look at you. I think you're beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> in case you weren't sure. Thanks, babe. Um, well, yeah, I, but what about you? Yeah, I. I mean, I like the feeling of you over me, like. There's something very sexy about that. I can get into a little pillow princess mood as well. It is it is how <laughs> you imagined that uh, married married people slept. <laughs> like not like slept like had sex, but like how they slept at night. I yeah. Mean, you, as Vanessa, imagined as a kid that uh, her spouse would sleep on top of her yeah. <laughs> with their full weight on her. I don't know where I got Not that sure idea. where she got that idea from. Sounds pretty horrifying to me. Oh, awful. I would hate it. But I do, yeah, I like the feeling of it. I like all variations, which we will talk about in a sec. And I like the intimacy of being really close and connected with each other. It just, yeah, it feels like a sweet position to me. The way that you and I have missionary sex, it doesn't ever feel like it's like you know, I'm just lying there staring at the ceiling and you're like pumping away. You know, it's always very, it's really intimate. I mean, the interesting thing about it is it can take on a lot of different tones too. Yeah. Like sometimes it can be very sweet and intimate and romantic and sometimes it can be like very wild and dirty. Yeah. <laughs> Which I like. It can, it can. And I mean, I'll say, I think that our missionary skills have uh, greatly up-leveled since we started sleeping together. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, early you were you were like, oh, it's never, it's never like boring or just like you pumping away. I definitely have some memory, maybe had a couple of flashbacks of like early on before we kind of figured out what really worked for us, where maybe it wasn't the most exciting thing. And I'm really happy that that, you know, we have a whole new idea of what missionary is. Mm -hmm. New memories. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about ways to play around with missionary and to make it feel different, more exciting, more passionate, more pleasurable. So the number one thing to make missionary more pleasurable is playing around with 
all the little small adjustments that you can make to the position. So that can be just like as simple as like moving a limb a little bit so that your weight is, you know, more on one side, more on the other side, like more, you know, on your hands versus your elbows. You can also change the angle of your bodies by raising, like, you know, for the person penetrating, you know, by raising your uh, your pelvis a bit or lowering your pelvis a bit. I think, you know, the person on the bottom can also probably make some adjustments with their legs to, you know, alter mm-hmm. the, the angle at which the penetration will occur. Or a like bit. a pillow under your hips as yeah. well can make yeah. a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. A pillow under your hips or, you know, actually straight up like the, you know, the, like a sex pillow mm-hmm. that, um, you know, is angled in a certain way, you know, that that can make a huge difference. Yeah, I think one of the things that surprises me the most about missionary is that making even small adjustments can really change the sensation of the position and the ex- overall experience of it. So much so that when we created Next Level Intercourse, which shows you all kinds of ways to have incredible intercourse. And one of those ways is via different positions. When we were coming up with all the positions, we were trying to figure out like, okay, like, do we just have missionary with a ton of variations? Or like, are there actually a bunch of different positions that are kind of in the missionary family tree? And what we- oh, the missionary family tree. Yeah, the missionary Love family it. tree. You know, the, the sex family tree. <laughs> that sounds weird. I don't know why. Maybe because family's in there. I don't know. But anyway, you know, what we ended up deciding on was we actually created 17 distinct positions that are all in that missionary family. And so they are all accessed, you know, by getting into position the same way, like Mm -hmm. just getting into what you might consider basic missionary and then making an adjustment. And the reason we decided to do that is because in each of these 17 different positions, there are further adjustments that Mm -hmm. you can make in each one. And that's what we do in Next Level Intercourse. We show you the position itself. We tell you, how do you get into the position? And then once you're in the position, how do you move in that position? And then beyond that, like what are different variations that you can do in terms of shifting your weight? And how to transition into Yeah, and, and yeah, how to transition into it. And then finally, how to get out of the position. Because that's another thing that, you know, we we were surprised once we started asking people about sex positions. One of the one of the big blockages to trying new sex positions is people not knowing how to get out of it or being yeah. like, it, it feels scary. I might hurt myself. I might hurt my partner. I had a bad experience doing mm-hmm. that once. So like we go super basic in next level interview course but yeah we we made 17 different Mm -hmm. distinct positions that are all accessed the same way and then you start moving your bodies and they're they're so different and they they can feel so good i think that's the coolest thing yeah so we will put a link to check out next level intercourse in the show notes we actually just got a dm from somebody that was like i'm really embarrassed to be asking this but like how do you get better at intercourse like i never learned this anywhere i feel so awkward i feel like i'm kind of just flopping around i don't know what to do oh we so, got you there we we got got you. let me tell you <laughs> so xander was just talking about the positions aspect of it but that really is just one aspect of the guide it's really all about learning how to have intercourse it feels pleasurable and satisfying and intimate for both partners and in particular we have a focus on female pleasure because a lot of women say that intercourse is not their favorite activity because it doesn't feel very good and we will talk a little bit about that next but it's such a great guide for really breaking down like exactly what to do and how to do it and how to have fun and increase the pleasure for everybody. Yeah, I mean, it might be my favorite product that we offer just because I think when it comes to sex and intercourse specifically, we so often just end up putting ourselves in a box where we stick with what we know. Mm -hmm. You know, especially I'm just speaking from my perspective as a man, like there's all this pressure of of being good at sex and like being good at sex from a very young age or like at a very mm-hmm. <laughs> low experience level and wanting to project to people like, oh yeah, like, oh, I lost my virginity, but I'm really good at it now. You know, like, you know, it was, it was so good from the very first time. And like, I, you know, very quickly you like everyone kind of expects it. Like, 
if you if you are if you're a real man like you know what you're mm-hmm. doing and because of that pressure you end up kind of stopping yourself from trying new things because trying new things feel scary yeah. because it's like if i do something new and i don't know how to do it and why would i know how to do it because i've never done it before no one ever told me how to do it like mm-hmm. i might not be very good at it and then i don't look like i know what i'm doing someone might Someone mm-hmm. might talk to their friends and be like, oh, he had no idea what he was doing. He was supposed to be perfect at it. But mm-hmm. the reality is no one actually expects you to be perfect at it. But I digress. That's why this product <laughs> is so cool because you can read all about how to do this stuff and actually feel like you know what you're going to need to do yeah. when you try it. It's not like totally flying blind. Because I think so many people are like, oh, I saw this sex position or heard someone talk about it. And like, let's try to do it right now in the moment, like when we are having Ooh, sex. Yeah, and like, <laughs> and that's just like a recipe for like someone getting hurt, losing an erection or mm-hmm. whatever, just having a bad experience. So yeah, that's why I love this. Before we go any further, we want to tell you a little bit more about Green Chef. To be totally honest with you we have had a very busy season of life right now oh and yeah neither one of us feel like cooking at all oh no we don't but green chef has been a lifesaver <laughs> these meals fresh they're healthy they're super fast to cook we have had a few days where i couldn't even fathom cooking but we were able to have a really healthy tasty delicious meal just the other day we had what was it the sesame ginger salmon yeah that was tasty oh my gosh that was so good so we are really liking green chef because they have options for every lifestyle there are a ton of different categories you can pick between like keto and paleo vegan vegetarian mediterranean we're both gluten-free so we just automatically filter our menu to be gluten-free um, they have also really expanded their menu so there are i think over 30 recipes weekly now so even with our categorization of it has to be gluten-free we still have many meals to choose from every single week oh yeah we have so many choices it's not like the old days of being gluten-free like 10 years ago where you go to a store and it's like, oh, you want gluten-free food? Here's one option. Yeah, no, we have so many options. It's been really great. And we actually like to double our order so that that way we have a meal and then we have leftovers the next day, which has also been a lifesaver in terms of not having to cook every single meal. We're just so excited to have Green Chef as a sponsor because we're eating their food every week. We're really enjoying it. It's been such a huge help in this really challenging time. So we're very excited to be able to share them with you. Green Chef recipes feature premium proteins, seasonal organic produce, and sustainably sourced seafood. Raise your food standards in 2023 and reap the flavor benefits. Go to greenchef.com slash pillow60 and use code pillow60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. And let us tell you a little bit more about rocket money too. So I've got a pop quiz for you, Xander. So do you think that most Americans know how much they are paying on their subscriptions? So the quiz for you is, what do you think Americans think they're spending on their subscriptions and how much are they actually spending? Oh God, I am going to guess that they grossly underestimate how much it is. Per month too. Per month. Okay, let's say that Americans think they are spending $200 a month on their subscriptions. Okay, and how much are they actually paying? $450. You're pretty close. You kind of like doubled it. So most Americans think that they spend 80 a month on subscriptions when the actual total is closer to 200. Okay, and second pop quiz. How many subscriptions does the average person have? Eight. 12. Woo! 12 subscriptions. <laughs> so Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. So if you are one of those people who is dramatically underestimating how many subscriptions you have and how much you're paying for those subscriptions on a monthly basis, then definitely check out Rocket Money. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Rocket money and the average person saves seven hundred and twenty dollars a year. Pop quiz, Xander, what would you do with seven hundred and twenty extra dollars? New surfboard. Oh, okay. So a whole surfboard. You know, we are not immune to this. I think I talked about this last time we shared about Rocket Money. We have had so many subscriptions ourselves, business subscriptions and personal subscriptions, where we just 
totally forgot about it. It's one of those like try it free for 30 days and cancel whenever you want. And then we forget to cancel and we've been paying for it. So Rocket Money is just an easy way to uncover all that money that you're wasting and get it back. So stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash pillow. That's rocketmoney.com slash pillow. Rocketmoney.com slash pillow. Okay, so let's move on and talk about other ways to make missionary more enjoyable. So I was sort of saying this a minute ago about focusing on her pleasure, that that's a big component of next level intercourse. So when we were preparing this episode, we got a DM from a woman who said, you know, as a woman, this is one of the worst positions for me to orgasm in. What can I do to make it better? So it's really important for us to talk about like intercourse is not the most pleasurable and satisfying activity for the vast vast majority of women. We have pulled this in the past and 91% of women said it's not their favorite. And one of the main reasons for that is because you're getting very little clitoral stimulation. And clitoral stimulation is the key to female orgasm, just the same way as penile stimulation is the key to male orgasm. And missionary in particular can be challenging because there's just not a lot of stimulation against the clitoris. Yeah, I mean, especially if you think of sort of your, your stereotypical missionary where penis owner or penetrator is on top and sort of thrusting their hips, Mm -hmm. pushing in and out. Like, yeah, there's not a lot of skin ever touching the clitoris if you're you're really truly thrusting. And there are other positions that tend to be much better for clitoral stimulation or female orgasm, like cowgirl or doggy style, where you kind of, where you end up with some natural, like, balls or uh, or skin <laughs> Natural like balls. hitting or rubbing against a clitor. I mean, I'm trying to describe like, why missionary. I think because you're kind of as you... <laughs> Sanders thrusting over here. What are you doing? Those, those are the balls swinging. <laughs> I know, but your hips started thrusting. I don't think you even realized Whoops. it. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, so like, yeah, there, but so like what I'm saying is there are other positions that are, you know, typically associated with, you know, being better for women. Mm-hmm. But yeah, with missionary, there are a lot of variations that you can do or using a hand or whatever to make it uh-huh. way, way better. And then you have, you know, that clitoral stimulation and also all the other positive things like the vulnerability, the being close together, looking at each other, holding each other. Yeah. Okay. So some specific tips for increasing pleasure and getting more of that clitoral stimulation is if you play around with the angle of your bodies, then the woman might be able to reach down and stimulate her clitoris. You can also, if you're the penis owner or the penetrating partner, focus more on grinding against the clitoris rather than that in and out thrusting and especially not the jackhammering, which we will get back to later in the episode. Yeah, I mean, I think this is really a huge one because I think a lot of guys feel like, oh, well, like missionary, it's it's so stimulating for me. I can't control myself. Mm. And yeah, if you're just thrusting your hips, kind of that slamming in and out away. slamming or not even slamming, but just like in and out thrusting, like, you know, almost all the way out and all the way in, like, mm-hmm. yeah, that is highly stimulating. And of course, it's going to be hard to make it last Mm -hmm. very long. And so that's where you can get creative with how you're doing it. So instead of thrusting, yeah, like the grinding, like Vanessa was saying, Mm -hmm. it can feel really good for the penis owner, but you are really in control of how quickly you're moving in and out. And, you know, I was really shocked when we started playing around with that of like, I'm like, wow, this feels really good to me. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in way more control of of my orgasm. Mm -hmm. And the reaction that I was seeing from you was like, was like, oh, wow, she's really liking this. And I feel like I'm not really like overstimulating myself. Because I think a lot of guys associate like, oh, the faster I go, the harder I go, the more she's going to like it. (laughs) And it feels like there's this like, I don't know, like inverse relationship of like, okay, the things that I need to do to make me last longer are not actually good for her. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked when we started playing around with this grinding. I was like, oh, this is like everybody is winning here. Yeah, yeah, that's such a great point. So another thing that you can do is take breaks 
from intercourse yep. to switch to manual stimulation or oral stimulation. So you pull out and touch her or go down on her or use a toy on her. We will also link to our foreplay guides, which are they're kind of like the sister product to Next Level Intercourse. They have the same step-by-step, like walking you through all of our techniques and exactly what to do, but they're focused on using your hand or using your mouth. So I think this is one of the big traps that people get into with intercourse and especially male female couples because we are really socialized to believe that intercourse is like the be all end all and it's like the home run yeah the home run once, once you, you yeah there, once you pass third base like you're not, you're not going, going back exactly. right unless you're gonna get thrown out no one wants that <laughs> But going backwards actually can be so much fun and it can make it more pleasurable for her. It can help him last longer. And it just like feels like this really exciting way of mixing things up instead of this, you know, going around the bases and the exact order that we all know to anticipate. It's like throwing you a curveball to keep adding to the baseball metaphor here. no 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 baseball <laughs> metaphors the baseball <laughs> metaphors are unhelpful so i think this is just such a great tip and such a, a great way to like make it feel more enjoyable and exciting yeah i mean you also in, in taking a break like you don't even have to to stop penetrating like you could just kind of you know the the penetrator could push up on their hands so that they're in a bit more of a push-up position Mm -hmm. and just leave themselves inside, stop moving. And that allows, you know, the the woman to touch her clit with her hand. And so that can be a way to continue stimulation for her while the penetrator gets a break. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, the next thing that you can do, and this is, this is mostly for the penis owner, the penetrator, the person on top, and that is change up the tempo and the intensity of the thrusting. And this, you know, goes along with like the baseball metaphors from what we see in you told porn. Me no more baseball all metaphors. Kinds, I know, I'm just referring to it. Oh, not, that they're bad. Okay. Yeah. Is is this <laughs> idea that sex is like we start slow and then you up the intensity, up the intensity, up the intensity, and you know, and then eventually you orgasm. And yeah, that makes sense from the perspective of like as a penis owner, if I want to have an orgasm really quickly. The more I stimulate myself, you know, he's doing the air jack offs over here. (laughs) You know, the the faster you go, the more stimulated you're going to be and the faster you're going to have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, I think that we just have this idea that like. Well, men have this idea that that's what women want, too. And I think, Mm -hmm. one, that's like a fundamentally flawed idea. Unless, you know, unless your female partner, like, really does get a lot of pleasure from penetration alone, it is very likely that more intensity is not actually going to be enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Um, So... I think that just changing it up throughout, not thinking like, oh, I go from zero to 10. It's like, you know, there's peaks and valleys. Like we go up, we go down. It's more of a vibe thing. Oh, it's yeah. a vibe it, thing. It's a mood. You know, it's a mood. It's a vibe. You got to keep the vibe right. You know, no one, you know, no one wants to just like crank it up to 10 and be there the whole time. That, that's too much. Vibin' with Xander. You're going to do like an offshoot podcast. That's too much. You're, you're, you're going to literally, you're going to literally blow your load if you just crank it up to 10. <laughs> okay. Literally and figuratively. So okay. yeah, I mean, this, this goes hand in hand with taking breaks, I think, is think about like the tempo and intensity in the same way, especially because you're looking at each other. It's like, okay, cool. Like it feels like. Things are ramping up. We're going to go a little mm-hmm. faster. <laughs> and then, you know, you know, take account of like how it feels to you as the penetrator. Like, oh, if you're if I'm feeling like I'm getting close, then I'm going to like, OK, like, let's slow this down. Then let's go really gentle. And if it's feeling like, oh, like I'm I'm going to come if I keep this up, slow it down, switch to something that is less penetrative, maybe more grinding, mm-hmm. nice and slow, and then just see where it goes. But just get rid of this idea that like it has to get faster and faster and harder and harder because that's not helping anybody. And yeah. it's just making the experience worse for both of you. And I think this is just a great tip, too. If like you tend to do missionary in the same way all the time, try the other end. So if for you guys, it's usually slow and romantic then try upping the intensity and the pace and making it like feel a little bit naughtier and if you're always jackhammering away then you definitely got to try slowing it down a little bit too okay so the next tip that we have is for the woman or for the partner who's on the bottom 
is to be active. So actually, I'm going to toss this one back over to you. So what do you like me doing when you're on top that makes you feel like, because I'm sure you've had, you know, we've definitely had sex where I'm just kind of like lying there enjoying the ride, right? Mm -hmm. And like, and we've had sex where I've been more active and engaged. And I'm assuming you like the latter a lot better. So like, what are the specific things I do that help you feel like, oh, she's really in it with me. She's enjoying it. Like she's participating in this with me. Yeah, I mean, I like it when you kind of like thrust back to the best of your ability. I think depending on how much weight is on you, you can or can't do that. Mm -hmm. Depending. So kind of like pushing back into Yeah, just, just pushing back a little. I'm not talking about like thrusting in the same way the person on top is, but mm-hmm. just like a little bit of a little bit of resistance or pushback that helps a lot. I think, you know, kind of squirming around. <laughs> like, <laughs> squirming around. <laughs> you know, like, like if you are, if it is enjoyable to you, like, you know, just like some, you know, so like a, I don't know, like a visual cue to like, oh, this is this is good. This is this Squirming is enjoyable. Around. That just does not <laughs> sound very sexy. But. Yeah, no, okay, may- maybe like not. Maybe not. Writhing. Yeah, maybe. writhing there, writhing <laughs> in ecstasy. <laughs> um, also, like squeezing your PC muscles. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, uh-huh. that can be good though. That can also be extremely stimulating <laughs> if done in the exact right moment. So that's definitely one to to play with. Um, don't like spring it on your partner, kind of like test out like, oh, how does a this feel? Squeeze. Yeah, how does this feel? How does that feel? Because I've definitely had moments where it's like going along, like, you know, minded my own business, all good. I hope you're not minding, no, not your minding own my own business. But, you know, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I'm good. I'm not like, I'm not like too close. And then all of a sudden there's like a, a well timed squeeze. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> whoa there. I either am coming or I'm about to stop. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't realize that it, I actually didn't realize that it can create so much, it can change the sensation so intensely for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. I think another great thing that you can do when you're on the bottom, I mean, this can be done by both partners, but like touching each other's bodies. Oh, so yeah. So like I'll run my hands like down your back or across your arms, your shoulders. God, how'd I forget about this? <laughs> I know. That's some of your favorite things, you know, for me to do. And it feel. I mean, it's obviously very active. You know, I'm like active touching you and the the type of touch can feel very different too it can be like kind of more slow and sensual or it can be like getting more into like a back scratching kind of like claws out type of thing yeah i mean you know? it, th- and this is a way for you to both participate in the vibe together <laughs> you know like like if you're on the bottom and, and you're wanting to up the intensity like maybe you can kind of grab your partner's hips and oh, and kind yeah. of like you know <laughs> shepherd them along so to speak, or or why is your word choice so funny today? Shepherd them along. Yeah, not I'm not sexy. You sex. I'm, I'm, I'm your missionary shepherd. <laughs> Uh, no, that is a really good, that's a super good tip of like. Yeah, or, using, or slow them down. Yes, exactly. Like using your touch to kind of guide your partner. Like if they're jackhammering away, like, yeah, you could kind of grab their hips and or like start doing like a slower touch on their body. It's kind of like a, a subtle cue of the direction that you're trying to go in. Oh, yeah. So those can those can all be great. Another great addition to missionary can be eye contact. So I know we already talked about it as one of the reasons that we like it. But a lot of people, I I think we've pulled it before and I can't remember the exact result, but I remember the majority of people don't make eye contact during sex. They're either looking away or closing their eyes. And it blew my mind. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like, I, I think it's kind of akin to like, eye contact during kissing like most people close their eyes when they kiss and so i can imagine Mm -hmm. how you could feel like oh well like having sex and our faces are together it's like at least as intimate if not more intimate Mm -hmm. than kissing so maybe we're supposed to close our eyes i don't know i've never been in eyes closed during sex i'm a visual person i like to see what i'm working with (laughs) what he's shepherding (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I like to see the results of my shepherding and progress. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, that that is an interesting comparison because I like eyes closed during kissing. I do not like having eyes open during kissing, but I, I like eyes open during sex. Except I'm always catching you opening your eyes when we kiss. I mean, I'll give you like a little peek really quick, but I'm not like I just staring think it's, at I you. I just think it's suspicious that I always <laughs> seem to catch you whenever <laughs> you're peeking. <laughs> well, maybe I just know that you're about to peek, so I peek. Yeah. Get out of here. Could be. <laughs> 
So if you're somebody who just doesn't have eye contact during sex, like definitely give this a shot. It makes sex feel so intimate and special. I mean, there are very few things that are as intimate as eye contact, even though it seems like a very simple thing. Now I'm making sustained eye contact with you. Oh, he's looking away. He can't handle it. Yeah, I mean, if, I, if I'm thinking about <laughs> eye contact, like I think you and I don't stare at each other very often mm-hmm. when we're having sex, you know, but we're, we are looking at each other. We are looking our, at our bodies and, and whatnot. Yeah. And, you know, our, our eyes are kind of moving around. Yeah. But yeah, especially towards the end when you're, you know, trying to have an orgasm, it can be really hot to just really really stare really look at your partner and i don't know see if I'd into ever say their staring. soul yeah we kind of you kind of drift in and out of we drift in and out of eye contact with each other i have a very hard time orgasming with my eyes open though i don't mm. i actually don't think it's possible to orgasm with mm. your eyes open what you mean with your oh like for anyone yeah like really in that, like maybe for part of it like the lead up to it but that like peak moment i don't think it's possible Oh, is that why I like to rub my eyes after I work out? Some... Yeah. Huh, I'm going to have to try this. I'm going to try to force myself to have an open eye yeah. orgasm. But no, I mean, it makes sense because, you know, it, like sensory deprivation, like typically if you deprive yourself of one sense, like your other senses kind of pick up the slack. Mm-hmm. So I can imagine that your orgasm probably does feel better if your eyes are closed so that you t- remove the visual stimulus. Yeah. I just feel like it's, I don't know if there's any science behind it, but I feel like it's one of those reflex type of things. Like it, you, it's like curling your toes or something. Like try to have an orgasm without like flexing any muscles or mm-hmm. something. Report back to us. Message us on Instagram. We're at Vanessa and Xander. If you can keep your eyes open during sex. Yeah. But- or during, not during sex. During, in, what am I saying? During orgasm. orgasm. <laughs> and send us a DM and let us know. Okay, here's another quick tip for changing up missionary is try doing it in a different location. So maybe that's like the sofa. Maybe you have a thick rug that you can use, a soft bench or something like that. A but, faux bear skin. Yeah, <laughs> a bear skin rug in front of the fireplace. Yes, Make sure it's faux. a faux. Exactly, please. Um, but just a little a little change of scenery can make a position that feels like that old familiar standby can make it feel different. Another thing that you can do that has nothing to do with intercourse, like physically, is add a little dirty talk oh. to the mix. I, I was going to say this is something that I actually, you know, that I like you know, Vanessa to do, of course, like I, I guess I don't really think about me doing it because I, I enjoy dirty talk and I kind of do it naturally. <laughs> big Al I, I, sure I, does. Yeah, Big Al does it, <laughs> does it naturally. But yeah, I think, you know, dirty talk you know, from either partner can be a really sexy addition to missionary. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that it can be, a, I think that can really be a great way to, to break this uh, association of like missionary with with boring sex like Mm -hmm. you can have some really really dirty like kinky talk (laughs) Mm. you know during you know doing a position that you might think is really basic or something and that can really up the intensity now if you're not immediately sold on dirty talk or you feel a little nervous about it we have a dirty talk guide that literally walks you through how to do it how to figure out what type of dirty talk you like how to figure out what type of dirty talk your partner likes how to mm-hmm. meld those styles it gives you a lot of like word for word examples of things that you can say oh, yeah and hundreds. try yeah <laughs> hundreds hundreds of things and and they're not always like super dirty things. Like I think that's the thing with dirty talk that people mm-hmm. get really wrong is thinking like, oh, it has to just be these, you know, these really extreme words or these really obscene words. But there's actually a ton of ways to have, <laughs> this might sound weird, but like really clean, <laughs> really clean dirty talk. Clean dirty talk. As well, um, you know, where you're just <laughs> commenting on what it is that you're doing. You don't even necessarily need to say any body parts. Like there are a lot of ways to do it. And we walk you through that mm-hmm. in that guide, which is why it's it's a, it's a super fun guide for anyone that feels like they want to get better at dirty talk. They don't know how to get started or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll link that in the description for this episode as well. But I think in particular, missionary can work well for people who feel a bit shy or new to dirty talk, because if you are in the variation of the position where you're kind of like closer together, you can like whisper it into each other's ears without having to make eye contact with each other. So it's like you're close, but you're not like having that sustained eye contact. And for a lot of people, it feels a little bit 
easier to not have eye contact while you're getting comfortable giving dirty talks. That can be a great tip. And our last idea for making missionary spicier, more pleasurable, more fun is to experiment with a little bit of kink. So uh, I think, you know, missionary, like we've said, gets this rep as being a very tame position, but you can make it very kinky you if you want to. You can make it as to. kinky as you want. Oh, yeah. So you can do some things like choking, hair pulling, orgasm control. And actually, that was the perfect review of the week for this episode because we will link you to that exact episode that the person was talking about. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> I swear this was not planned. Yeah. <laughs> we literally opened up the podcast as... <laughs> and just found this review. I don't think you even read it all the way through. I didn't. It's like, this one looks good. <laughs> so that is episode 53. You can go look that up. How to spice it up in the bedroom, exploring kink for beginners. So there are tons of great kinky tips that you can use during missionary to make it feel more exciting. Okay, so let's get to some listener questions. I want to toss the first one over to you, Xander. Okay. So someone wrote in and said, here's my challenge as a guy. How do I hold my weight up so I don't crush her, but also be able to touch her? Interestingly, when I was going through the question box of things that people submitted for this episode, there were also a lot of women who were saying, when my partner and I are in missionary, like he puts his full body weight on me and it makes this position feel really uncomfortable. So I would just love for you to speak as the guy about how do you navigate this, like where your weight goes? Because yeah, I wouldn't want you leaning your full weight on me either. So I, I just think it would be interesting, like as a woman, I don't really understand like <laughs> what do you, how do you hold yourself up but keep the stamina where you're not like dying but also be able to touch not do the i don't know this what do you, is how you do it babe <laughs> this is a really good question and it's it's a hard one to answer without actually being in that position because it's kind of this instinctual thing i guess but i i do think that there are there are a couple different ways for you, the person on top, to hold your weight. Like, you can hold your weight. You can be on your hand so that you're in sort of a, a push-up position or, like, m maybe more of, like, a cobra position. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, if you do yoga. Not, not a particularly hard position to do. But if you're up on your hands, I would say that would be the way to have the least weight. On yeah. your partner because you're you're literally holding your body up. Now that is a harder position to hold in the long term. Uh -huh. I think that if you're in more of a cobra thing, though, it's not like your whole body weight is on your hands. It's mm -hmm. not like you're in a push up or a, or a plank position. Mm -hmm. Like that's not what we're talking about because like your legs are still going to be on the bed. Your knees are down. Yeah, your knees are down, holding a lot of the weight. Oh my god! Can you imagine if anybody's doing it like in a plank position? <laughs> oh god! I mean, I don't really know. I think you would be too high up unless you were on like a sex pillow below. I mean, God, I guess if you like really want to like <laughs> pair your workout with with your sexy time, but I would not recommend that. So yeah, I think the hands are like the way to have the least weight on your partner. Then again, that's not the most comfortable position mm -hmm. for for the guy for the person on top. So I would I would reserve that more for you know maybe harder thrusting or, you know, a, a shorter amount of time doing a very specific movement mm -hmm. or variation, then there are kind of shades, I guess, of like how you can be on your on your elbows and forearms. Mm -hmm. You know, I, God, I, I might have to like get down on the floor. <laughs> I mean, position, you've already like thrusted but... in here, you've air jacked <laughs> off, like get down on the ground and start, do it. <laughs> we have an adjustable right. mic. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I can't, I can't get down. Okay, hold on, wait. All right, I'm in the background. <laughs> I'm on the floor. I'm on the floor. This is going to sound ridiculous. Vanessa's trying to point the mic here. I'm not sure if you're going to hear me that well, but I'm yelling. All right, so like when you're on your forearms, that's a very easy position to be on in terms of like not getting tired out. Now, I think the key here is how you how you have your pelvis. Like you can have your, your pelvis down or you can angle it up so that you're moving yourself more up onto your knees. And the higher you lift yourself up onto your knees and kind of uh, bring your butt backwards, the less weight is gonna be on your partner. So I think that's a really good way. If you're on your elbows or forearms, that's a great way to control how much weight is going down on your partner. 
All right. Great. Thank you for that informative lesson. You're welcome. And then finally, getting back to the very first part of the question about, you know, not crushing your partner, but also being able to touch them. You know, I I think that missionary for the person on top, it's honestly, it's not the greatest position for you being able to have a free hand to to really touch their body and especially to be able to touch their clitoris because that requires you getting all your weight onto one side of your body or to one hand or one arm so that you can then move your hand kind of like down and, and that's that that's going to be that's going to be a challenge. So missionary is a better position for the person on the bottom to be mm-hmm. touching the clit especially. So when we talk about adding clitoral stimulation, we're mostly talking about the person on the bottom yeah. touching touching themselves. That being said, you can try to shift all your weight to, you know, like say to your right side and your right forearm and try to play around with like, you know, if if you really be one of our variations, yeah, that may be a variation. (laughs) If you can get all your weight on one side, it's you're not going to be able to have super deep penetration or be able to have very fast penetration, but you will be able to free up your hand Mm -hmm. a bit. So maybe you really like that one. That could be a great one while you're taking a break or something like that. So just play around with that. All right, next question is, I always feel like I'm just staring at my husband's nipples. Is this, <laughs> did, you, did, you, uh, did you put this one in? Yeah, what advice do you have? <laughs> this is definitely something that we deal with a lot, having a one foot height difference. So I do think like some of this is just, it's kind of unavoidable. And so if you really dislike that, you don't have to do missionary. You can do other positions. You can also, though, like try playing around with the angles of your body. It's a little bit more if he pushes up onto his hands. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, that it's like when his weight is lower onto you, that's when you're in the nipples. But if he pushes up, that can help. And or you if can you also, do a sex pillow so that you're exactly kind of what I was angling. About to say next. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you, if you're on the bottom, angling your pelvis up, and then that would allow you to almost be... Your head, you would be upside down and maybe your head would be even kind of looking backwards a bit, yeah. which would be backwards into his face, yeah. hopefully. And he can also like kind of hunch over a little bit, like crane his neck down a bit. It's not super comfortable, but it can be nice, like little breaks to give kisses or make eye contact, something like that. But in general, like I just want to normalize it like th- this is something that happens. Yeah, it, it just totally depends on your your heights and how your bodies fit together. Mm-hmm. All right, Vanessa, how do you prevent the queef noise that happens when your chest presses up against each other and you're kind of sweaty? Oh, so not actual queefing. It's like the body farting. The the body fart, exactly. The fart squeak. (laughs) So this this is real. This is another one that we have to normalize. And it's so funny. I feel like... I, I don't know if I've ever seen or heard anybody talk about this before, like the way that your bodies can like fart together when you're having oh, yeah. intercourse. But this is totally normal. It's a thing that happens. And I mean, it's like if you want to go to great lengths to prevent it, you would have to make sure your bodies aren't pressed against each other. Maybe you'd have to have some sort of little towel by aside you so you can like wipe off any sweat that gathers. But it's like, who wants to do that? Like just... Let the little farts happen. It's okay. It's normal. Everybody goes through this and experiences this. Like, just kind of laugh it off and keep going. Yeah, I mean, I think another thing, though, is that some amount of preparation can help with this. You know, if that's like making sure that you have your thermostat set so that it's, you know, a cooler, more comfortable temperature. We hear from a lot of people that, that express hesitance in doing things before sex that are obviously like, oh, we're about to have sex because I'm turning the AC on or I'm I'm turning the the temperature down. I'm putting the music on. I'm Mm -hmm. putting lingerie on or whatever as if somehow like showing your partner that you want to have sex with them (laughs) is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I think a lot of people get in their heads about that of, oh, well, it'd be so awkward of me to walk over to the thermostat and set it to like an unreasonably cool temperature because I know we're about to get sweaty <laughs> together. So that's one thing, you know, if that's if that happens a lot. And because I know this happens to us if I have forgotten to adjust the temperature or it's, it's warmer than normal. Yeah. Like y- you get a lot sweatier a lot quicker. Yeah. And then another thing is this gets back to the intensity thing is like if you are just kind of constantly upping the intensity then yeah of course you're going to be each getting sweatier faster Mm -hmm. so this could be a good argument for oh okay once we start feeling like we're getting a little sweaty 
let's slow down for a couple of minutes. That can be a way to kind of uh, <laughs> yeah. de decrease <laughs> decrease the the perspiration. All right. Well, those are our tips for making missionary feel more pleasurable, spicier, more exciting, and different. I hope you found at least one tip that you feel excited to try out. But honestly, I would give all of them a try. So we will link a couple of things for you. Obviously, we mentioned Next Level Intercourse a couple of times. Like It's such a fun guide if you want to explore making intercourse feel more exciting and pleasurable. If this episode got you excited and you're like, what's next? What about all the other positions? Then definitely check that out and also our foreplay guides and that dirty talk 101 guide well that's all for today's episode of pillow talks thank you so much for listening join us again next week when we answer the question is this normal 